Hello there, this is Mr. P. On today's lesson, I'm going to teach you how to vary your sentences. This will be a writing guide to structuring sentences. So let's get started. First, let's take a look at the contents. Suggestion number one, vary sentence structure. Suggestion number two, practice subordination. Suggestion number three, practice joining simple sentences. Then number four, practice cutting tangle constructions down. Number five, try converting phrases and dependent clauses into absolutes. And number six, vary your sentences. So let's get started with number one. Vary your sentence structure. So by now, you should be able to understand what an independent and dependent clause is. A simple sentence is one independent clause, basically. So let's take a look at the first example. Mary and John split their assets equitably. So we have the subject, Mary and John, then a verb, split, and then an object, assets. Equitably is an adverb. So an independent clause can stand alone. So is there is a subject and there is a verb. So a compound sentence, though, is uh, two independent clauses joined by coordinating conjunctions. Coordinating conjunctions are and, or, nor, for, but, yet, so. So let's take a look at another example. Mary kept their house, comma, and, coordinating conjunction, John kept their car. So we, if we divide these two independent clauses, we can have even two sentences. Mary kept their house, period. John kept their car. But we want to join them. We join them with a coordinating conjunction, such as and. And we have right here a compound sentence. Now let's take a look at the other type of sentence that we have in English, which is a complex sentence. It is one independent clause joined to, an, to one dependent clause. And what is a dependent clause? Let's take a look at the example. Marriage is a lottery, and that's an independent clause in which couples take their worldly goods. So in which couples stake their worldly goods is a dependent clause. What does that mean? It cannot stand alone. Marriage is a lottery, period, yes, can stand alone. But in which couples stake their worldly goods cannot. That's not a sentence. It is called a dependent clause. The next type of sentence that we have in English is a compound complex sentence, which is a compound sentence joined to a complex sentence. Let's take a look at an example. They knew that their friends didn't expect their marriage to last. So they only invited close relatives to their wedding. As you can see from this example, we have so. So joins two sentences, right? So um, then we have complex, complex sentence is one independent clause joined by a dependent clause. So that would be the first one. They knew that their friends didn't expect their marriage to last. So they knew that's an independent clause. That their friends didn't expect their marriage to last is a de dependent clause. Then we have so, which I repeat, is uh, a coordinating conjunction. And there you have it. Now, I have to say something about this. Dependent clauses begin with a subordinating conjunction, such as one of the following, like after, like although, like as, because, before, how, however, if, 
since that, though. Subordinate or dependent clauses also begin with words starting with WH like where, when, which, who, etc. So don't forget that, it's very, very important. So let's take a look at the second example. Practice subordination by converting groups of simple or compound sentences into complex sentences. Jean hated school. She quit and found a job at a local supermarket. Later, she returned to college in a different program. This time, the program was more suited to her talents and goals. If we want to um, change to convert uh, this sentence, we would add because Jean hated school and then comma, she quit and found a job at a local supermarket. Later, when she returned to college, she entered a different program, which was more suited to her talents and goals. So you can see when and which introduce a dependent clause. So now let's practice. Convert these sentences into complex sentences. Pause any time to complete the exercise and then look at the key. Now that you have your sentences ready, let's take a look at the key. So because the soup was too cold, I had to warm it in the microwave. Even though I'm a passionate basketball fan, I sometimes play soccer. Although she is considered intelligent by her teachers, she did poorly in her last exam. Since Hannah got here last week, she has been nothing but trouble. Because I was too late, and since I was always forgetting things, I was regarded as a scattered brain by my friends. So there you have it. Now, let's take a look at the uh, third suggestion. Practice joining simple sentences together using verbal phrases rather than subordinators. Start by changing the verb into a participle, usually ending in ing or ed. Then remove its subject and connect it to the appropriate word in the following sentence. Let's take a look at an example. John makes extra money. He plays piano in a restaurant downtown. So if you wanted to revise that sentence or these two sentences and make them into uh, one, we would add a participle, ing. So then by, the preposition by, playing piano in a restaurant downtown, and then the subject, who. Josh makes extra money. And we have our revised version. So let's take a look at the fourth um, suggestion. Practice canning tangled constructions down to size by creating simple sentences where the reader might have difficulty in understanding or where you wish to place more emphasis. A factory job is superior to a job requiring post-secondary education. Some would argue the opposite. So I would start with although, which is a subordinating conjunction, and then write what? Although some would argue the opposite, then comma, a factory job is superior to a job requiring post-secondary education. Let's take a look at the fifth suggestion. Try converting some of the phrases and dependent clauses in your writing into absolutes. Um, phrases with connecting words removed. Keep the subject of the clause and its accompanying participle. Remove other words. Like in our example, because his sports cars was wrecked and his hopes of winning races gone, Mario decided to become a cashier at a, at a department store. So if we wanted to take out uh, words such as because, for example, right, I would write 
his sports car wrecked and his hopes of winning races gone, comma, Mario decided to become a cashier at a department store. Now, the last um, suggestion would be to vary the sentences by making them more suspenseful. The typical English sentence moves directly from subject to verb to object or complement, a structure often called loose, and I will give you an example of that. In other languages, the word order is often not so direct. Placing a subject or verb near the end of the sentence, right? This structure is called periodic. Like the, the example right here. So Daniel gave Lucy a diamond ring, a very simple one. Subject, Daniel gave, which is the verb. Lucy object um, is the um, indirect object and a diamond ring is a direct object. So uh, in a periodic um, uh, sentence, I would add adverbs such as shyly, anxiously, and with tears in his eyes, comma, then Daniel gave Lucy a diamond ring. Periodic sentences would work in narrative, for example, in a story uh, to create, like I said, suspense. Well, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you have any questions, suggestions, please post your questions uh, below this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. If you like the lesson, please click on the like button below and you may share with your friends if you uh, want to. Have a great day and I see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.